Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to attach and use a robot arm with a mobile robot. In the 3D world I have a layout open, which you can find a link to in the video description. So open that layout, and if we run the simulation, you can see our mobile robot has been told to pick up a part here, and bring it all the way to this station over here. The movement of picking and placing the part is an interpolated motion, so the part just moves you know, in a straight line of where it needs to go. You may notice we have a UR5 robot in the layout, so how can we use that robot to pick and place those parts? You could of course use any robot you want for this tutorial, but let's select the UR5 robot, and now move it onto our vehicle. I'll use the snap command, and snap it to the top face here, so right about, eh, right about there. In order for the robot to move with the vehicle, it has to be attached to it. So with the robot selected, use the attach command and attach to the vehicle. Since the robot is attached to the vehicle, it knows to use the robot to pick and place parts to and from its pattern or its carts. So if we run our simulation, you can see now the robot is being used to pick up those parts and to place them. It's as simple as that. So once again, pick up the part and place it. If you want to use a gripper or end of arm tool with the attached robot, it's simple. Let's go to our e-catalog panel, expand models by type, scroll down to tools, select visual components. Let's use a simple gripper, this item here. Drag it into the 3D world and use the PMP command to connect the gripper to the end of the robot's arm, like so. Now the robot will be told to use its first tool frame for picking the part, so if you have some imported tool frame from your gripper and you want to use that, just reposition that first tool frame. Ugh, how do you do that? Well, select your robot, go to the program tab, use the jog command to select the robot, and then from the jog panel, use the tool property to select the first tool frame here. So click the gear icon to select the tool frame and now we're moving tool frame 1, not the robot. And we want to snap it to where this gripper tool 1 is in the end of arm tool. So let's now use our snap command. Remember we're snapping the tool frame. I'm setting its position and orientation and to make life easy I'll use a snap type of frame to quickly select coordinate systems or frames, in this case gripper tool 1. There we go. Let's get a better view though. So I'll rotate the camera so you can see. So this tool frame right here. The preview looks good, so I will click. And now tool 1 is at that location. To confirm its orientation, I'm going to go to the tool properties panel and change the coordinate system to object. And we can see now tool 1, its set axis is pointing down. You could also verify that from the smaller coordinate axis here in the move tool. So if I change it back to world, you can see there's the world axes, but here's the smaller ones there. And if we go back to our home tab, I'm going to slow down my simulation just a bit so you can see how that changing that pick location of that tool frame one changed up the simulation. So now the robot will use that gripper and that tool frame location. There we go. So that was to place to pick it up. Sorry. Let's go over here, and now the robot has to pick up the part and place it here, and it will use that tool frame we just repositioned. Great. Now, in some cases you may want the robot to pick and place more than one part. Well, it's easy to do. Right now our vehicle, you can see its pattern only supports one item, so with the vehicle selected, let's go to the AGV tab and its component properties, change the pattern amount to be 2 in the X and 2 in the Y, Generally, I change the amount I need for my pattern first, and then change the location of the pattern. But you may have some box or some other containers here of where you already have a static location. For our step size, let's change this to be 200 in the X and 200 in the Y. You can see the pattern now here. Let's move it back along the Y axis, negative 100. And yeah, it looks okay. But because we're using simulation, we can see if our robot needs to be moved somewhere else on the mobile robot in order to reach the parts. So if we run the simulation, I'm not sure if it can reach. 
Let's see. No, I can. Okay. So it's been told to pick up one item and place it over here. So let's reset. And now change this up to where we are actually picking more than one part. So we could copy and paste this component. Let's actually clone it real quick. Then use our move tool. And let's move it all the way over here. And because we're using a task name of AGV, or you know, any other task name besides route, we're actually directly assigning the task to our mobile robot. So this should work to where the robot knows to go here to pick up a part and also here to pick up a part. And yep. Picks up one part and we'll bring it over here. But we want to see more than one part picked up, so let's actually say clone this station as well. And move it over here. Now we're getting a bit more complex with our routes. So it's on a first come, first serve basis, so we're going to pick up a part here and whoop, take it over there. And then go all the way back here. Pick up this part and bring it over here. But we want a robot to pick up more than one part and place more than one part. So what I'm going to do is actually create a route and assign that to the vehicle instead of tasks. So with the first process component selected, I'll go here, I'm going to change my feed task, task name, to use that keyword of route. So now, whenever this task is executed, the works task controller, which you have learned in a previous video, will know that any vehicle that visits this station and its route can do this task, as long as it has capacity to pick up the parts. Let's also use the simultaneous option here to feed all the parts that are at the station with this product ID. And let's replace the task. We're only creating one cylinder though, uh, so let's change this to use a create pattern task instead. To create a cylinder, let's use a pattern of two by two, so two for the amount on the x-axis, two for the amount on the y. You can use a step axis, x-axis value of 100 and the same for a step y. Let's replace the task. And since the create pattern does not allow you to change the product ID of the component, we actually have to add an extra task for that. So change that default product ID of the component's name of cylinder to be 111. And that is what we are feeding in this process, the product ID. And that is what is needed at these stations over here. And now let's create a route for our vehicle. So to do that, remember, you have to go to the Works Task Controller. We will use the Route Control tab in the Component Properties panel to create a route. Let's call it Point AB. For its route type, let's use force. So this will force the vehicle to wait until all the stations in the route are ready and have something to do. So for our route, let's keep it simple to start with. Let's just include this station and this station. So we'll get to these later. So for our route, let's pick this station and this station. If you make a mistake, you can, of course, delete them and reorder them, but we want to go to this station first to pick up parts and then to this station to place parts. And we can assign this route to a resource. In this case, we're assigning it to the vehicle, not the robot that's attached to it. So let's select our mobile robot. Click Generate. And now the route is created, but we still have to edit it. So let's click the Open a Note Editor button here. This will open the note editor for the task controller, and you want to go to the route control orders task here, this note. So let's find our route. It's here. Create some space. It's called point AB. The type is force. And we're going to wait until works process is ready. And this other station as well. At the first station, we want to pick up anything that's available. And at the last station, we want to place anything that is needed. If we select our mobile robot, you can see it is still assigned that direct task of picking and placing the parts. So let's get rid of that. And now it just has an assigned route. We didn't directly assign work to it, a point AB. And if we, before we actually run the simulation, what do you think will happen? Will the vehicle go here and here, or just to this station and this station? Remember, we only assigned it a route. And its route, hopefully you guessed, is to go here, pick up a part, 
and then go here to place a part. And this might be a common issue you might find when simulating this type of scenario is that the robot isn't picking up anything. So you have to try to find out why that's not happening. And in most cases, it's because the robot cannot reach the parts. Let's go to our output panel. And yep, you can see at the bottom here, a position is out of reach. So if we select our robot, go to the program tab, use the jog command, select the robot, and we can see, ho oh, ho, oh, we have an unreachable position here, P1. If we even click it, actually, the robot will try to go there, but it can't reach it. So how can we fix this issue? Well, an easy way is just to move the robot closer or change its location on the mobile robot. So let's reset, select our robot, and we're not programming the robot, we're moving it. So I'm going to go back to the Home tab to you know configure the layout, not program the robot. And using the Move tool, I'll just move it along the x-axis to eh, right about here. It's kind of aligned with the edge of the pattern at this part. Now, of course, you could change the resource location of where you want the vehicle to go. But in this case, I'm just you know moving the robot around. Run the simulation again. And yep, now it's picking the parts. One part, two part, three part, oh boy, and one part. And it's not going to go there, it's not going to go there. It will go here, because that's what is in the vehicle's route. And it's only being told to you know place one thing, because that's all it's needed here. So if we want, we could change this out to have more needs, but that's simple enough to follow. Let's now include these other stations in the vehicle's route. So let's go back to the task controller, open its notes, get the route control again, and you could create a new route or just edit it here. So it might be hard for you to type in all this stuff, so let's actually yeah close this out and create a new route. So from point A, B, C, and D. Let's make that the name. We will also make this a force route. But we want it to include these other two components, so this component and this component. So we're going here to pick something, here to place something, here to pick something, and here to place something. And we're still using the same resource. So generate, open the route in the note editor, find it, here it is. Create some space, just, you know, just to make it easier to read. First location, we want to pick up something, anything that's there. Next station, we want to place anything that's needed. Next station, we want to pick up something, anything that's there that we can pick up. And then we want to go to the next station and place anything that is needed there. So I haven't really tested this route out yet. It's just, you know, the first step. So let's actually see what happens. The robot does start moving. Let's collapse our route here speed up our simulation so we'll get those four parts. Notice it does not go here to pick up something because in its route we told it to go here first and place something. And now we're telling it to go to this location but it's actually not. Let's find out why. Ah yes! Hopefully you know why the robot <laughs> did not go here, did not go here and it went from here to there and straight back. It's because we did not assign the route to our vehicle. It is assigned, but remember a vehicle can't have more than one route. It gets confused about which route it's supposed to take. So in this case, it took the first route that it was assigned. So let's get rid of that one. And now it's assigned the route of point A, B, C, D. If we run our simulation, you can see that right now our robot is not doing anything. Now, if the robot can reach the items, the next thing to check is there's some issue with the tasks themselves or with the route. So if we reset, Go back to our route. We do have each task assigned at the station, so we know we're going to pick something, place something, pick something, and play something. We're also using a type of force, so the robot is being forced to wait until all the stations in that route are ready. So if we select this first station, let's look at its tasks. Looks fine. Select the next station in the route. Looks fine. Let's look at the next station, creating a cylinder, and here's one thing I want to point out, is that 
When we copy and pasted the workstation, we did not change the task name that was being used to execute that feed task. So because this task is not directly assigned to our vehicle, the task controller doesn't know that it's supposed to assign it. So we have to use that route keyword. And now if we exit out this and slow down our simulation, you can see now the vehicle is moving because all the stations are ready, the work is ready to be done. So it should pick up four parts, deliver one part, go pick up another, and deliver that part. And yep, there you go. We of course will have some issue here. We're telling it to pick up more parts than it can carry, but we can of course fix that. Let's change this station to need more than one item. So let's actually just create four needs. And I'll speed up the simulation. And we just did have to quickly test if that fixes the issue. There's one. Pick up one part here, but we have four needs here. Give me one. Oops, it completely skipped it. <laughs> it went straight here. So in order to avoid that, because it completed this task, but then went back to execute the feed task, it's not an easy fix just to create those needs. So we're going to delete these. And now we're going to replace this one need task with a need pattern task. And let's actually need the property of 111. And let's use an amount of two in the X, one in the Y, and another two on the Z axis. So let's replace the task. So now we need four parts at this station. And I'll reset this here because I did forget to do one thing, which was to simultaneously send out all the requests to have the parts in this pattern placed here. So let's select the simultaneous checkbox and click replace task. Run it again. Now it gets those four parts, places one, picks up another, and yep, there you go. So now we have a working solution. Great. Okay, this completes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day.